Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tele Lakai. I'm your host, Jimmy Jacques. Before we begin our show tonight, I would like to wish a happy new year to all of our viewers and a happy 218th year anniversary of our independence to all of my Haitian brothers and sisters. And I hope that everyone had their subju mu. As you may have also noticed, we did not have our normal introductory song for the start of the show. Well, we have decided to change the name of the company and also the name of the show. It is still being called Tele Lakai, but the only difference is in the spelling. The company is now called Lakai Enterprise. Lakai, L-A-K-A-Y Enterprise. And the same goes for Tele Lakai Showcase. So, new year, new name, and a new intro to our show. Please sit back, relax, enjoy Tele Lakai. We will be right back. <laughs> Welcome to Tele Lakai, a television magazine about entertainment, health, news, Caribbean cuisine, and the hottest Haitian artists. Tele Lakai shares with you the talents of our Haitian brothers and sisters, and we feature the intimate lives of Haitian writers, singers, actors, sport figures, and entrepreneurs. Tele Lakai. The Tele Lakai Show has been brought to you by Aichi Community Trust, working to support and sustain development innovations in Aichi, mobilizing Haitians and friends of Aichi to invest in Haitian-led asset-based innovation using a community foundation model backed by an endowment. Our honored guest this evening on Tele Lakai is an entrepreneur who grew up in the northern part of Haiti, in Cap Haitien. He is the co-founder of Tappen Mobile Solutions and is also the founder of Creek Crack Mobile. He is the CEO of Gotham Secret, a clothing line for the confident men. He is also the president of the Ligue Haitien de Football des Jeunes d'Haïti. And he is the father of one of the bright stars on the Haitian national soccer team, Mr. Zachary Erivo. My guest tonight on Tele Lakai is Mr. Pedro Erivo. So sit back, don't go anywhere, and we will be right back with our special guest, Mr. Pedro Erivo. Mr. Erivo, it is a pleasure to have you with us this evening on Tele Lakai. And Mr. Jimmy Jacks, thank you for having me. And I just want to say hello to all the viewers. And then I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. Mr. Erivo, you were born in Haiti and came to the States at the age of nine. How was your childhood growing up in Haiti? Growing up in Haiti was a challenge, you know, as you know, most, most a lot of Haitians uh, growing up in poverty. 
there's a challenge every day for my family, for my parents to to put food on the table. But it was a good experience because, you know, uh, it was a small little community. It was fun. So we play every day on the street, uh, playing soccer, or playing like uh, hide and seek and things like that. So it was it was it was it was fun. Coming to the States at such a young age, how was the transition for you when you arrived uh, here in the U.S.? Uh, new language, new friends, all of that. What was it like for you? Very, very, very challenging. Because, uh, you know, come from a small little community when everyone knows your name, everyone's calling you by your first name, but really deep name. Um, everybody know how quick you were playing soccer in the street with your friends, and suddenly, you go to a new language, cold, ashy legs, you know, new food, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. every, everything, you know, so, but it was, I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want it to be there, I, mean, I wanted to go back home, I had, you know, I had no choice because everyone was there, and my brothers and sisters, so it was like, I need to, I need to adjust. Now, you've also played soccer, how did soccer help you? Uh, within, you know, during that, that time uh, for, uh, in the transition uh, uh, from Haiti to U.S., how did soccer help you? That's a good case. Well, I'm like, that's, that's a good uh, question. I mean, I mean, because sports kind of opened doors for me because even though I didn't speak the language, but if I go play soccer with the Jamaicans, uh, because the Americans didn't play soccer, there's only a Jamaican, the Trinidadian, you got a few Panamanian. And then they were like, it's skills good. So they would be nice to you. You know, so it helps a lot to create new friends because when you're good in the sport and everybody wants to be your friend, they want you to be on their teams. And then so that helps a lot because, you know, I was very, you know, I'm a good athlete. So I started playing basketball, American football. So I started hitting real quick. So that, that helped me a lot. I mean, so soccer is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Playing soccer at a very young age, uh, you've also played professionally as well. And you played professionally also in Japan. Can you please take us on that journey while you were in Japan playing soccer? Well, it all started, I stopped playing pro at 16 uh, in New York, at Jefferson Height, uh, with uh, the big guys, you know. Uh, and then because my brother played as well, so you know, I was, he was always, you know, carrying me, you know, with him to play. So. You know, I started playing really young, and then went to college. Then from college went to Japan. It was a you know again from Haiti to America, not from America to Japan. You know, new languages, but this time you know they were making they were making fun of me. You know, so it was more like welcome. And I got injured you right at uh, a training day, and I decided you know what I'm not going back to the state. I'm gonna stay down there with my wife and just a lot of family there. Mm -hmm. So you were injured uh, during the time uh, uh, in Japan? Yes, I, I got injured because in, uh, uh, the team was waiting for me for three years. And then that, um, because that time um, uh, they didn't have a, we didn't have a president. That time, um, uh, uh, what is, well, I forgot his president name again, he had a coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. Was the, the priest, what is his name again? Uh, I see. So I see that time left the country and then I had a Haitian passport. So when I went in there, uh, I couldn't get I couldn't get another passport. I couldn't get anything because the the government was in Haiti at the time. They, you know they didn't know him as a government because it was to the top. So by the time they, you know finally did, I got to Japan when they, when he came back, got a new passport. And when I went there, I guess mentally, physically, I was not ready. You know, I kind of basically was kind of give up anyway because I was like depressed because I knew this team was waiting for me. I was in top shape then after a few years to go there. So when I got there, and after like uh, a couple of weeks of training, my knee blew up. And then from there, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm done. Was your modeling career also uh, in Japan? You started that in Japan or was it in the States? I started in the state, New York. And okay. Because the you, did, you did model for some major uh, fashion brands. Yes, I did. You know, I mean, I used to look better than this, Mr. Jimmy. You know, I had the dreads. You know, I had the physique. You know, and then you had you had dreads at that time, huh? <laughs> I had dreads, the physique, you know, and uh, you know, you know, it's so funny because you know how the Haitian culture is. 
because my parents always called me, oh, you skip it, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you He's so skinny, and then like he's had the cheek, sharp cheekbones, and then when I came to America, it seems like they love my cheekbones, they love my physique. So it's mm-hmm. part of the culture difference and then things like that. You also had a a club in Japan, and um, what was that? Was it a Caribbean club, or what type of club uh, did you have there? It was most most like a lounge. We call it. Zo's bar, you know, it was like more like, you know, the Japanese, you know, because it was so funny, it was diverse, it was like, you know, mostly Africans, Americans, and then Japanese would come to the bar to to get to know our culture. So, and then, you know, so everybody, so you would come in there, everybody come, all the Japanese girls and guys would come here to speak to us. It was like, uh, it was, I mean, it was amazing. It was, you know, we have the, uh, the bar for like, years and then you know even we had the Fuji's came in you know uh, visit us uh, our club came to the bar and then you know it was it was a it was, it was a fun s- spot to meet people who was your partner at the at the um with the lounge uh, uh club at that time max max which is i want to say what's not big up to my brother max which is now his dad uh where, you know he's doing big things and also helping Haiti and, uh, and Jacques Bell helping open the school for tennis. So I just want to say big up to Max, which is uh, Naomi's dad, uh, who's my childhood friend. It's so funny, he's the one that took me. I told him that all the time. He looked, he was laughing. He took me to get my license. You know, he's older than me by a lot. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so he so, took you to get your license. Was yeah, it in New York or in Japan? In New York. In New York. In New York. So, so you guys have been friends for a very long time. Yeah, for, uh, forever. My mom would not let me go out. He didn't pick me up in New York. And it's funny, you know, what your kids were also born in Japan. Correct. Wow, it's it, it's ironic, you know, to see that uh, both parents and the kids are so successful. Uh, you know, with Leonard, uh, Leonard Francois' dad, with Naomi, and yourself. Uh, uh, with Zach, with Zachary, uh, who is now is you know one of the biggest stars in the Haitian uh, football team, national football team. Yes, yes, he's there. He's you know, you know among one of those guys. I'm very proud of him. And it's, 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 it's I mean, Max's birthday was like a couple of weeks ago. I went to um, Florida to spend some time with him for his uh, birthday, and we mm-hmm. talked about that because he used to be in St. Zachary when he was uh, when he was in Japan. And then we talk about it. You say, "You're Pedro. Hey, remember, remember, when we were like in Japan together." <laughs> and then so, like you know, both you know, your son's doing well, my daughter's doing well. It just you know, life's funny, you know, because mm-hmm. we came from the same little background kind of thing, uh, you know. And then for us, you know, I can say right now as we get older, right? You know, we, you know, we can say that you know, we were successful in many ways, you know. So, so that was that was funny. Now. Pedro, during your career, being a football player, mod, model, living in Japan, where you don't see too many blacks, what sort of uh, racism did you encounter being a black man in Japan, if there was any? Well, there is. I mean, it always going to be, you know, uh, you know, but the thing is that what the culture I came from, you know, uh, being from Haiti in the hood, in the Haiti, up in the hood, in Brooklyn. So my, 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 my men, mentally, I'm very strong. So when these things happen, I pretend I don't see it. It doesn't really mm-hmm. bother me. But you can tell, especially when you're taking the train. When you're taking the train, well, it's, if you sit if you sit down as an open space, no one yeah, will really. be kind of afraid. They, but people they don't say it to you because they look and you know, stare. But they can't come in your face because they're afraid of you because you're like big and black guy with dreadlocks. Mm-hmm. You know they see those movies like black guys very violent, so they think if they come to me and say something, I might that they'll be violent. Yeah, they they'll be violent. But the thing is, you know, but but I've I've overcome that, and then Max went through it too. Um, especially when I started dating my wife, her father, I was not the biggest fan, and the same thing with Max. You know, mm-hmm. you know he wasn't the biggest fan, but at the end. Now everyone, 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 you know, happy, and then because 
we not only we, we, we changed the culture and we, we took them from, from zero to a hundred real quick. So now like we have like kids that everybody knows who they are now. They're very successful. So they're like, well, at the end of the day, it works out. Now, after Japan, you came back to the States and by the time uh, your kids were grown, it's, that's when you st your, your, co your coaching career began, uh, teaching and coaching uh, your son Zach, who is now one of the best players on the Haitian national football team. Uh, tell us about that. Well, you know, my, so when I was in Japan, then again, it was, it was very difficult for me because after that I got injured and then and Japan is very crowded, a lot of people. And then I decided, but it's not too many big parts because everybody kind of live, you know, they live on top of each other because it's so, so small, it's, it's a very small um, uh, country. So people live in like buildings, there's not a lot of mm -hmm. So I went in my bus, you know, every time I take my kids back to New York to visit my mom and dad, there was a big communication problem because they didn't speak Korean, they didn't speak English, most okay. of them Japanese. So my when Zach was three years old, my oldest son was five. So you know, I said, you know what, I want to, I want my kids to grow up in a country where it's diverse, when they could have friends, you know, black, you know, Asian, mixed, whatever, mm -hmm. Latinos. So I, so I wanted to, I didn't want to grow up being a black guy, a black kid in in Japan, because I know they was going to do the same thing I would. The kids gonna make fun of them because they yes. are the only black kids in the school. So I so I just so I decided I talked to my wife and then at first, you know, parents is like, no, you know, but they you know, we talked about it and we decided to move, you know, to to Massachusetts. I didn't want to go back to New York because there was too many bad memories there. So we moved to uh, uh, Massachusetts. This okay. is when, when Zach was three, this is when soccer but Zach stopped playing soccer before he grew up. You know, because I put soccer in the bus. You know, Dad didn't make it the way I wanted to make it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to make sure my son goes through, through it because my father didn't push me. My mom didn't push me. They used to kick my ass. So because I was playing soccer, you know the culture. They want me to be a doctor or a lawyer. That's so, right. You, know, <laughs> you, you're absolutely right. Soccer was not one of the no. uh, uh, things that, uh, you know, the, uh, your parents uh, back in those days wanted you to have. Nope. Not one of those professions. All of my people now. I want to see now jump. You know, just, mm -hmm. just for like the Nakabo. You know, you need to be a doctor, lawyer. I'm like, no, I don't want to be a doctor, or lawyer. Really, I want to be a soccer boy. Not in my house. <laughs> yeah. So they were top pretty well. Pedro, uh, talk to us about your relationship with the New England Revolution and uh, your work with the inner city kids in Boston at that time. Well, you know, um, I got lucky. Um, and um, I own, at that time that I, uh, I become very close to a good friend of mine, Shari Joseph. He's from Grenada, but he grew up in New York and he was a superstar for the New England Revolution. You know, he's the midfielder, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. And we become very close to each other. And we decided to open an academy, soccer academy together, called Shari Joseph, you know, academy. So then, then we, that's when Zachary started playing. And then, you know, and then we had one of the best team because what I was doing, I knew the inner city, that's where the talent was. So Shari, Shari put all the money in front. And then what I did, I went to like Dorchester, all these places with the hood, find kids from 
Cup of Verde, like African River Haitian kids, and then bring them to the team, and then we just destroy everybody. Zach also played for the uh, New England Revolution as well, right? Yeah, he played for the academy since he was 16, all the way to when he was like 23. Um, after that, he from the academy, he signed a contract with a uh, professional. Mm -hmm. And then he played with them for like another five years. And then, and then from there, then, you know, so he started moving around. So now, you know, he's playing right here in the USL. And then now we're looking for some other bigger club. Okay. Big Bo, talk to us about Tappan. What is Tappan? Uh, Tappan, Tappan. So Tappan, <laughs> Tappan is to me, man, is this, my, I think it's one of the biggest thing, you know, I, I've been involved and it's the biggest thing to be changing in life forever when it comes to sports. So Tappan, it was my friend and I, Steve Checker, it was, it was, it was like a brother of mine. Um, we, we always, you know, we decided, um, me personally, I always go back to Haiti and do soccer camp, give soccer balls for kids because soccer ball is important to me because growing up, I didn't have soccer ball. So we used to kick anything that ran. So I knew that how important soccer ball was to, to, to me. Well, you know, and that's why I decided to always collect soccer balls with Zachary, with friends to bring back to Haiti. And then suddenly then, um, um, you know, so Steve decided after the earthquake, Steve's like, Pedro, and let's go back to Haiti because I don't know how to fix legs. You know, how to, you know, we're not medicine. We're not a medical. So let's do some soccer camp to keep the kids happy in this community. So that's when we decided to go there to open, to uh, I mean, to do clinics. And then that's when Tapper was born. When we realized in Haiti there's no youth league. So if there's no youth league, how do you find best player in the whole country for your national team or for the professional team? So that's when we create the software where we're going to do youth league inside the, the platform. And then we're going to have data on players and coaches, referees, the fields to know where's the best field, the best referee, the best coaches, the best player. And then from there, we partner with schools. The kids are very smart. We can bring them here to America. Now, right now, today, we have a kid right now from the league in Miami trying out for a couple of clubs. I don't want to say the name yet. Um, I don't want to jinx it, but and then next week we got two kids going to Europe to try for a professional team in Europe, and that because now I know where the talent, is. you know. So this is what topic is basically to give um, to keep the players in Haiti opportunity to show their show their talent and find them who they are and then help them out. Every single day. Does your phone click crack has anything to do with that as well, merging with the Tappan uh, uh, line? Well, Creek Crack is a big sponsor of the tap. I mean, the, the youth league. That's okay. what in the jersey you'll see. You'll see Mega and you'll see uh, Creek Crack. So we the two sponsors for uh, to help these kids because, you know, uh, usually it's only $25 for the whole year. Mm -hmm. for two uniforms, home and away. And it's hard for the, even the, the, for the parents to come out with $25 for the whole year. So we have to come together as sponsors. And then I want to say thank you for all the sponsors as well for uh, helping, especially Miss World America, Cassandra Wallace, who's been doing a lot of things for the girls to play soccer. And then so, and then all the donors. 
So when did you form the League Nationale des Jeunes d'Haïti? That's two years ago, right before COVID. It wasn't for COVID. Now we have like uh, 7,000 kids playing on their platform. 7,000, but it wasn't for the COVID. Well, within, say, within that league? Yeah. Yeah. So wow. if, it, if it wasn't for the COVID, I guarantee we get 100,000 players. Okay. Pedro, Pedro, tell me what let's, let's, let's rewind this. You have 7,000 kids in Haiti that's part of the Ligue Nationale de Football des Jeunes d'Haïti. Correct. That is correct. Yeah, because we have leagues in Cape Haitian. We have okay. in the, um, uh, same one. Is it in all 10 departments? Well, that was the, that's the goal. But because that's the goal. of security problem, so that's why we like Cape Haitian, Gonaïve, Saint-Marc, and Port-au-Prince. So now we're moving in and because now we came in, we were supposed to start in Jacmel, but because it's insecurity, so we're just holding to, you know, holding on. Ligue nationale de football des jeunes d'Haïti, c'est la première ligue football haïtien qui a rassemblé joueurs de football dans tous 10 départements du pays. Ou qui a téléchargé l'application Ligue là pour suivre les statistiques de tous les joueurs qui inscrivent. Ou qui a joueur international, ça va Mm -hmm. Right now, in, in July, we bring in the U18, uh, no, the U16, I'm sorry, to Sweden. We're going to do a national, pick the best player in the country, the U16, and take them to Sweden, uh, called the Gacha Cup. And then, so, we, we, I'm hope, you know, we're working on this, we're raising money for this event. I feel like, and we're, we're, we're going to make Haitian. You know, mm -hmm. you know, Haitian proud, be proud. Haiti gonna be proud with these kids because I'm gonna bring like the U16. He got some serious talent. Jimmy, it's very sad. You know, the things I'm gonna look at you, I'm gonna look at me. See the level of talent we have in, in Haiti. Imagine if people give us opportunity, it would be skyrocketing. I see talent I never seen before in Haiti, barefooted playing in the street. I'm like, what is this? Why not? Well, I don't know why these guys. What are they doing? But the level of talent we have in Haiti, we can compete with any club in the world. All they need is help and our, you know, the opportunities. You know, so it's, it's, it's really sad. And, and this is why I'm here in, mm -hmm. in Haiti. Uh, it's very unsafe for me, you know, in Haiti when you're sometimes when you're doing good. Some people may not love you. But at the end of the day, man, where I came yeah. from, the, the culture I came from in Haiti, from Brooklyn to where I'm at now, there's no fear. I'd, I'd rather die doing something positive than die doing something unpositive. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm doing for these kids right now, Jimmy. Uh, That's yeah. positive stuff, man. Yeah, it's just, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, it's just like, you know, I got chills when I see this kid, you know, ESPN, you know, scroll this girl, people be like, mm -hmm. oh, is that your son? I'm like, no, it's not my son, but he's my son. You know, because I make it happen. It's just That's like, right. First time on a plane. You know, so it's rewarding. Is your organization, Ligue Nationale de Football des Jeunes d'Haïti, the only club sanctioned by the Fédération Haïtienne de Football? But listen, we're not, we're not a club. We're a league. You're a league. We're okay. a league, we're a league. So therefore, that in Haiti, this is the first time. Right? You, know, it, you know, I made history. Uh, a poor kid from Haiti now, we're the first time, we're the first time in history in Haiti we have a youth First time ever. You know, so we partner with the Federation. Of course, we had, uh, you know, what Dadu uh, Jamba when he was there. Um, and that's when we all started. Uh, we love the idea. You know, we, you know, he's very supportive. You know, no matter what people say about him, but it was, it was the truth the truth. If we could land in Haiti right now, very supportive because of him. He, loved, he embraced the idea. And then, so now, you know, I don't know what's going on now with the, uh, the new Federation. But I, uh, right now, we can say that we are basically doing everything. Does, does, would that affect your league in any way? Well, I mean, a little bit, because um, I haven't gotten any support, to be honest, with the Federation. And mm -hmm. I thought that something like this, 
you know, it be, it be for them because I'm doing it for them to find the best pitch for when the World Cup. Sure. So, you know, uh, but because of all these things going on with the Federation, I'm sure they're probably busy trying to get things. But while they're busy, I'm doing my thing. You're doing your thing. But, but it's right. for them. You know, like when I'm doing it so big, so massive, I can't do it enough. It's for the for coaches that love soccer or love ch- kids. If you don't love kids, you don't love soccer, you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I don't sleep. That's all I do every day. I talk to the players, talk to the coaches. There's a lot of work. Pedro, how do you recruit these kids? And at what age can they join the, uh, the league? And what is the process for them? Well, it's from 6 to 18, boys and girls. Six to eight boys and girls. Boys and girls. Okay. The challenge, I want a lot of girls. There's so many great talent for girls. But unfortunately, for some reason, the girls are coming. You know, we only have like five teams, you know, with the girls. And I have a sponsor, all the girls who play for free in the league. And just to make them come. But for some reason, it's kind of hard. You know, I don't, you know, you, you know the culture. Some, you know, they always say, oh, the girls that play soccer, female, they, you know, they like come boys, some parents, those are one kids that play girls play soccer. So things like that. So we we pushing it. We got more girls coming, teams coming on board. So, but start from six to eighteen. You need to be with a team. It does not need to be a club. It could be any team. You just go. You need a coach. The coach has to do it. You have to download the application, tap in okay. the description, and the app is for free. They need to take a free classes on the app. We actually question inside the application. You answer them. You get a certificate signed by me, and also Steve Checker. And then, uh, you know, and then, then from there, then you take, you know, you set some showing that you, when you took the class, you understand a little bit about soccer. Then you could start putting your team inside the application. You're 18, you're 16, you're 13, boys and girls. They age, put your, you take a picture of the, uh, on the application, put your phone, and you put the birth certificate because there's a lot of cheating, age cheating. Oh my God. You you, you should see, see, see kids like you think they say 16 those kids look like 23 so we wow. work on that she's trying to give let the let the give the youth the opportunity so we have a a way to you know help a little bit for age cheating but mm-hmm. we're doing a great job at it every time i find a team is cheating as the president of the league i kick you i send you i kick you out right. i said well, you know what we appreciate it is there a fee for yeah, the kids. Yeah. Um, but we asked for um, for the kids, you know, you know, twenty five dollars for the whole year, and at the twenty five dollars for the whole year, that's included. That's for the uniforms. They got okay. two, two uniforms, home and away, so they get two shirts. And, and that's for the year. For the whole year, and then you know they get two top, you know, home and away, one shirt, two socks, and that's it. So um, and then now, so we. They still couldn't come out the money. So now we said this season we asked for ten dollars, and we found a sponsor to cover the other half. So, so and that's it. Has there been any of your players uh, from the league national that has gotten any contracts or has played overseas or even uh, uh, have the opportunity to, you know, continue their education here in the states? Well, not yet. The reason is okay. that it's a COVID. You know, if it wasn't for COVID. I had, you know, I had so many. You, that would have been done already. Oh, done, yeah. I have, I have a kid that, you know, 16, is a great player, very smart, speak English. For some reason, the kid doesn't speak English for his own, through mm-hmm. YouTube. Um, you know, and then because of COVID, you couldn't come, you know. But uh, right now, as we speak, we have one kid who came from the league, came and stayed with me in Boston, tried for the Revs. The Revs love him. And then right now, he's in Florida, training, practicing against his 15 and he's training and then by next week you got two players you know one from the league the other one i want to help but one from okay. the league going to europe next week Pitbull, our country is going through some terrible times right now with the gang violence and you know just the, just the whole mess man economic everything how does the current situation in haiti af- uh, affects your work with the kids i mean a lot I mean, we were supposed to start soccer for them a long time ago, you know, way before, you know, um, I mean, a lot. But that's what I decided, you know, I'm like, you know what, 
people think I'm crazy. They do know this country so insecure right now. It's, it's not so, it's not the right time to stop the league. But I, I, I say, you know what? I, the kids need to play because all these kids, they sit at home, they can't even go to school. You know, imagine a kid, you have so much energy, and you have to sit at home. You know, you don't have no TV, you don't have no football, you don't have no video games. You can't play, you, that's the only thing you have to stop to play, you can't. So I decided to open the league, but it just, it, it, unfortunate, you know, it's been really crazy. But to, to, to be fair, so far the league start, nothing's open, nothing happened. Because most, most of the players, uh, Jimmy, came from this kind of unfortunate, unfortunate they make this kind of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They're from they're from Matisan, they're from, so, and, and, and then I'm sure some of the kids that play in the league, they kind of family members to all these guys. You know, so basically, they, they, I think that they, 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 nothing happened to my kids when they play because I think these guys, they enjoy, they love soccer and they support the, the, the program. So basically, soccer is the way out for them. Your league is probably one of the way out for them as well. Exactly, I mean, it was it was a way out for me, mm -hmm. you know, as a as a as a player, as a kid. So uh, these kids, you're are paying it back, man. Yeah, exactly. Man. Those kids you're are paying it back. I adopted this little kid from City Soleil. When I met him, he was he was playing there for the Dura Motion. Jimmy and I, this kid lives with me now in Haiti. Um, and then you're gonna hear about him. Seven, after, when I got him, he was seven years old. Now he's nine. He is probably the best young youth player I've seen in my life. And this kid, um, um, I'm working on this paper trying to get him to Spain. And then, and then this happened to be one of them. So it's a way of going back because if you don't do that, Jimmy, you know, you, you're gonna create more bandi and more more game. Definitely, definitely. Because these kids have talent, but they need to showcase their talent. So if you don't do that, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. They're going to stay there and then they have nothing to the way. They're going to stop doing the bad things. You know, Somebody's going to give them a weapon and then boom. Next yeah. thing you know, that's it. So we need to start thinking for these kids. We need to start being selfish. Start thinking about our house. Thinking about these people are just human. They have needs just like we, we do. And then, mm -hmm. we and then, and then, you know, and then let's help them. And then like those kids now, if they, those two kids right now go to Europe, they make it is the whole family the neighbor they're going to move their parents out they're going to help right. people. so you, you help not only one kid you help the whole family that's good that's the goal pedro what was what, what was it that you can say that you learned growing up in haiti as a kid that you still carry with you today and that you have passed on to your kids respect mm. you know, respect people that are older than you respect your brothers and sisters um, always, as you know, Jimmy, uh, you're old school like me. You know, if you walk by in the neighborhood, you don't say good morning to the neighbor, you know, you get that whip. And then we don't believe in uh, here, like, you, you know, social welfare, like, you know, prison, <laughs> you, you, get the, you get the belt. That's so right. That, that the whole community watch after you. So it's till this day, everywhere I walk in the place, I always say good morning to people I see, you know, um, shake their hands, I always say you look great. How are you? How's your day? How's your family? Make them feel like, you know, that I appreciate them. You know, so respect, you know, you know, like if I, if I took the train and if someone came in pregnant, older than me, that I would, I'll get up and give my seat. Yeah. It's those kind of thing that I, I, you know, I pass it to my kids. And like, especially my son, they're like, oh my God, your son's so humble. You know, I said, well, you should, you should be humble because you keep us off the other end. You know, that's, you know, no, I mean, he, he's Zachary, like, he, he, he just plays soccer, but he's a human being first. So always have time to sign an autograph. Always have time to take a picture with, with someone because, you know, you're just kicking a soccer ball. That's, that sh you, you shouldn't be thinking like you're dead, man. You know, mm -hmm. so respect is the key. Respect will take you a long, long, long way. That's right. That's right. Pedro, what's next for you? And also, how can the diaspora help the organization or well, participate listen uh like i said my 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 line is always open um, um i need a jasper you know i we got too 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 many jasper in america that wants to do something but they're always afraid they don't know how 
because they can't trust organization because they've been burned before. So I need, you know, if you're watching, uh, please, you know, uh, you need to join me. Um, I'll even give my personal uh, inform information. My number is 617-605-6899. That's my direct contact. And um, so you could just call me, and then I don't want you. I don't want you to do a donation things like that. I want that, but also I want if you could be a part of it because you could see it. Because I'm very everything I do transpires. You know, um, I want you to come because this kid needs us. Mm -hmm. We we only we we the only one that could save save this kids because we live in America. We went to school. We, we have smart. We have visions, and then yes. we need. We need I knew Graham mm -hmm. because what we do, all these kids want to play. Every kid wants to play. Just even, even, even by sponsoring twenty five dollars for the kids, you know. And and so far, to be honest with you, Jimmy, I, I, I there's a lot of people been involved. I have this lady called Magali. Uh, she will forget me. She's she's been hands on, you know, helping uh, with the kids with the league sponsor like two team, three teams, and then she's not rich. You know, I have friends that said. You know, even my daughter, she sponsored three players. You know, so 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 far, but I need something to come in. Like for example, we take the team, uh, the U16 to Sweden. You know, it's like a uh, six thousand dollars, you know, trip. But think about taking like, you know, eighteen players with three staffs to Sweden for the kids to play like a World Cup and to showcase their talent. You know, if AV Jasper, you know, you know, you could give her two three dollars. We raise that money and we give those kids a big experience. That's right. Yeah, I mean so. That's right. This is a new year, Bill. Uh, we're in 2022. What would be your message uh, that you would like to send out to our audience, to the world that is watching today? Well, I wanted to say, man, I'm glad you said that, Jimmy, because you know I I love I love people, Jimmy. I'm always been a a, a people person. Like I want my friends, my colleagues, my everyone to do well. So my is like to see that if all the Haitians could put their head together, you know, light nation, dark nation, and white Haitian, whatever, to put their head together and work together, remember about those kids, because all these gangs that happen in Haiti, all you see in Haiti, these these people, these people were like just a child. They were just innocent kids, but we turn the back on them and we forget about them and now they come back they bite us so and then if you don't do something about it it's going to get worse so i would love to see because the new generation will be worse if we don't do something about it to see all the jasper all the haitians come together and work together and then have some opportunity create some opportunity for these kids clean water hospital education sports and things like that. So my hope is that we can work together to have a better Haiti because the country is so beautiful, Jimmy. You know, I left Haiti, I didn't know about my country. I left Haiti when I was a kid. So I thought that was Haiti. Now I have an opportunity to go back to see how beautiful my people is, how beautiful my country is. They just said, it's sad. So my wish for us, my wish is for all of us come together and then make this beautiful country. Like mm -hmm. Trump, make Haiti great again. You know, one of the things that I, I've always said is that, uh, Pedro, we cannot wait for others to do for us. We have to start doing things ourselves. Exactly. And you are proof of that. Um, Mr. Pedro Ivo, it was a pleasure and an honor to have had you as our guest this evening on Teddy Lakai. Uh, again, you are a role model for our youth. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we look forward to having you back. Not just yourself, but I'm looking forward to have Zachary on as well. Zachary, Zachary. <laughs> well, if you want to come down and say hi, I don't know if you have time, you can come and say hello. Is he there? He's here. Let me say hello. Zach. Let Zach say hello to, to, to the audience. Oh, wow. Why let me, not? Let me call, let me, let me call Zach. Okay. This is Zach right here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Zachary. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm good, good. It's, it's, it's an honor to have you with us on our show. You're doing quite a, you, you, you're doing great things. Thank 
anything. <laughs> I'm, I, I can't speak Japanese. Mais vous pouvez parler créole avec nous. Dis-nous deux mots en créole. Comment est-ce Bien, bien. Vous parlez un petit cal. Vous parlez un petit cal Oui. C'est bon, man. C'est bon le travail que vous avez fait en Haïti avec ces enfants. That's fantastic, and 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 uh, you know, just keep doing it, and um, we're hoping to see you in the World Cup one day. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, long term goal. That's, that's, that's the big goal. Okay. Again, it's it, it's a pleasure to have you. I'm not gonna keep you for long. I know your dad, you know, took you away from <laughs> things that you were doing, but thank you for you know saying hello to our audience. Do you want to say something for the new year? This is 2022. Uh, it's new year, so it's a new opportunity for everybody. Plus, to, to be this year, so just everybody take the opportunity and do something great. All right. Zachary, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, Pedro? Yes. It's a pleasure, again, to have you. Thank with you. us uh, on Tele Lakai and uh, you know like I said we're looking forward uh, to have you back keep us informed of uh, you know the work that is being done with uh, the league and uh, how we can help this is this is this is your platform great thing I can do to make the show to show to show the world that Haiti you know it's not negative it's not a lot of bad net bad things but it's not all negative it's a lot of positive so I'm very proud of you, man. Keep doing the, the, the big work. Thank you very much, my brother. And you have a happy new year. You too, brother. And you look Thank sharp. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, man. Be good. All right, man. Thank you. The Telelakai Show has been brought to you by Haiti Community Trust working to support and sustain development innovations in Haiti, mobilizing Haitians and friends of Haiti to invest in Haitian-led asset-based innovation using a community foundation model backed by an endowment. This mask can save your life. This one too, temporarily. With this mask, you can breathe when you choose to. With this one, you don't have that luxury until you stop breathing. Which mask would you rather wear? Your choice. C'est ça qui fait ma réfléchir. Tout ça ouais, ou soit autant des oies, si c'est bagay négatif. Haïti, c'est un coup de battement qui est monde. Les gens regardent tout bon bagaille qui est dans le monde. Pour qui ça, c'est un mépris ou qui est frère ou accès. Pour nous avancer, il faut que nous respections les gens. Pour ça, il faut que nous qui devons là. Il faut qu'on ait nous tous ces mêmes. Il faut qu'on ait tout. Pour qu'à créer l'histoire, pour qu'on ne soit pas bravé. Que qui a des vies et des poils, c'est black. Pour liberté des gars, mais garder nous pas de feedback. Et chaque jour, nous vivons, nous garder des boules. L'autre état, puis l'autre état, puis l'autre état. Un vieux est posé, mais sujet qui est souillé. Deux, le pédé coché et cassé contre une marine. Trois, ce sentiment nous cap quitter nous. Nous pouvons des sociétés, nous pouvons nous plaire à l'aise. Nous Pour nous chanter, pour espérer, pour espérer
bouger Chaque tout le monde dans la vie, faut copier red Pas occuper sa captive que nous c'est nec Copier red, pour pas mito, prêt pour faire l'it là Depuis là, tu fais pas qu'on est bio, sans militant Chaque monde qui a une mission, oui, faut qu'on vision C'est peut-être un tata sous ta papa pour un bon décision Sans moi, m'a copé, ou a copé Lui a copé, nous tout tape copé Once again, it was a pleasure to have you with us this evening on Telelakai. We hope that you have enjoyed our show. I would also like to thank Mr. Pedro Erivo for being my guest tonight on Telelakai. And I strongly recommend that if you can please sponsor one of the kids in the League Haitienne de Football des Jeunes d'Haïti. As always, I would like to remind all of our viewers that the purpose of Telelakai is to showcase the work that we as Haitians are doing throughout the world. Our talents, our culture, our professions, and our history. And to also show to our beloved country, Haiti, the professionals that we have and who we are in the diaspora. So please, if you know someone who deserves to be recognized and that you would like to suggest to us for an interview, you may contact us at www.lakai.com. Tonight, I would like to end the show with these words of motivation from Steve Harvey. Every successful person in this world has jumped. Eventually, you are going to have to jump as well. You cannot just exist in this life. You have got to try to live. If you are waking up thinking that there has got to be more to your life than it is, then believe that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. We are all born with a gift. Identify that gift. When you see people soaring by, going to exotic places, doing the things they love, have you ever thought that maybe this person has identified their gift and is living in their gift? Your Bible says your gift will make room for you. A lot of people out here has degrees, but can't do anything with their degrees. Yes, we all do need an education, but the only way for you to soar is you've got to jump. Take that chance.